All right, so have you been using ChatGPT wrong, right? So what you've heard is when they switched over from ChatGPT4 to ChatGPT5 that you get completely different results when you try to use it the exact same way that you were using it with ChatGPT4. So we're going to explore this and see if we can actually use ChatGPT in a ChatGPT5 in a way better way. And then we're going to also test optimizing our prompts better for ChatGPT5. Now let's go see if we have some settings on. So you're gonna go over here to, I'm a plus member over here. We're gonna go over to your settings. You're gonna click on settings and then you wanna make sure that you're looking at show additional models. You can click this on and what that's going to do, there's a place where you can set your memory. So there's personalization right over here. But if you go over to the personalization section in settings, you can actually come over here and you'll see reference saved memories. I turn that on now because it starts learning things about your business that you can just go and start a new chat. Limited characters, I think it's 200,000 context window. You will actually be surprised that as you're chatting with ChatGPT in the same chat, you're actually going to use those tokens pretty quickly. If you turn this feature on memories, then it's going to keep track everything that you're talking to with ChatGPT. GPT. It's only going to make ChatGPT more powerful every time you use it. That way, every time you go to use ChatGPT, generally speaking, just use a new chat, a brand new chat. That way, the 200 token limit resets every time. So you can get the best answers when you start with a fresh chat. A lot of people get in the habit of just using the same chat. So make sure that's turned on right there because I was using it a couple weeks ago. And it referenced something from a long time ago about my business. I was like, whoa, how did it know that? It's because this memory feature has been turned on. Luckily, it was turned on. Now, if that's turned on, the more you use ChatGPT, the more you come up here and just say new chat and start using it, it's gonna get better. And I actually like that. Now I'm a Claude AI user a lot. I use Gemini, Claude, and ChatGPT, and I use them in different ways, but that is my favorite feature right now in ChatGPT. It's keeping track of everything. The way that I use Claude is I have a project and I have to train it. Every time something updates, I have to go in there and completely update my project. It's kind of a pain in the butt. ChatGPT starts becoming pretty darn powerful when you're using it this way and it's keeping track of all the memory. So once you have some of those settings, you can come over here and now uh, because we turned that show all models, you're only going to get this on the plus account. I believe as a plus member paying $20 a month, you won't be able to choose between these models. Generally speaking, I actually do like ChatGPT 5. It's the most powerful version of it. They're continuing to refine it and make it better every single day. And I like using the latest model of stuff, right? And I find that ChatGPT 5 is really good at searching the internet and and so forth. If I grab a YouTube URL, throw it in here, it's able to analyze it very quickly. And that's kind of the way that I use the tool. But right over here, I'm going to go with just auto. I usually just use auto when I know I want it to really do everything that it can to exhaust the thinking and research function. I definitely have used the thinking right here as well. I haven't really used thinking many. I feel like that's new in the last couple of days right there. And then you have your instant right there. But a lot of times for what we're doing now, what I want to show you is this thing that most people don't know about, and it's actually by open AI. So chat GPT actually created this tool and it's a chat GPT five. I don't know why they have a toggle drop down, but it doesn't work. If you click on it, there's no setting over here. I'll try to leave a link for this below. So you can mess around with this, but this is literally just a tool that they built. That's going to, that you can type anything you want in right here. And then it's, you're going to push go and optimize. It's going to optimize your prompt for you. How cool is that, right? I just reviewed the other day called Prompt Engine on AppSumo. It kind of does the same thing, but why not take this for from a free tool, ChatGPT OpenAI, and, and you know that it's gonna be good because they're building it for their own tool. I already have some pre-prompts and I asked Claude to create some prompts. We're using another tool to create the prompts so there's no bias towards a software or anything like that. We're gonna take some of these basic prompts and I've instructed Claude to create five basic prompts that we can test this tool out. And so we're gonna go and paste this in, this first one, write a short story about a time traveler who gets stuck in the wrong decade. So this is something that most people would maybe type in and it's just a short sentence, short and sweet, right? What we would want to do is click the optimize button and that's going to extract the message that we put in there, the original prompt, and that we're going to see what ChatGPT can do with it to make it even better. Right. Okay, so it's in testing, it's just not working. Right. So I even um, typing in something right here, I push the optimize button and nothing's happening. We can go and test another one out. So it's not really doing anything. I'm going to go over here and just 
type in something else. Now it's supposed to work. Let me open this up one more time, paste something in, push the optimize button. Now it's trying to do something. Let's see if it'll actually do this scanning for contradictions or format issues. So this might be something that you might want to put your prompt into, but so far in testing it three or four times, it's not really working like you'd expect. Right here, polishing for clarity, structuring sections, constraints, clear steps. Seems like it's maybe doing something right now. We'll come back in just a sec. Okay, so this is how it's supposed to operate, but I, remember, I've tried this two or three times before and I didn't get any changes. Now it's gonna give you a review changes, plus 26, minus one. So role of objective, you have all this right here that it's going to give you, and you could copy this entire thing. What you would do is copy this whole thing right here would be the new prompt that you could go and place into ChatGBT. But I think I found a better way to do this, right? Instead of having to go over to the site over here and so forth, which I don't think is working that great in my initial testing, we would come back over here to ChatGBT and create a GPT, right? So we could just show you how to basically use this. We're gonna go back over here and grab our first prompt. I'm gonna say, make my prompt even better. And then I'm gonna paste my prompt in right here. We're gonna go over here and type in ChatGPT5 prompt optimizer chart. There's gonna be a bunch of people that have already created, you know, what they think the best ways to create content and prompt ChatGPT5. So you'll be able to come in here, find one that you like. I think I found one over here. And then what you're gonna do is just come over here and take a screenshot of this right here. I'm just gonna screenshot this, boom, like that capture. Then we're gonna come back over here to ChatGPT5. I'm gonna go ahead and upload this real quick. And you're gonna see right there, boom, we're gonna upload this right here. And then I'm going to push the go button. And then we're gonna see what ChatGPT can come up with. It's going to read that document and make this uh, prompt even better. And here we go, great starting prompt. Let's use the cheat sheet you shared to level it up. Right now your prompt is simple and clear, but we can enhance it by layering role constraints, style and depth. So ChatGPT 5 produces a rich and more engaging short story. So here's three upgraded versions you could use. So role and constraints cheat sheet number three right there. I think it's right over here role, objective, and constraints. So you can see right here, it's actually pulling that one right there. So it pulled cheat sheet number four, three, four, six, and eight. So it was able to grab this and it went with three, four, six, and eight to create some different prompts for us. So you can see that it took the very basic sentence that we put in there. And for example, you're a award-winning science fiction author, write a short story under 800 words about a time traveler who accidentally gets stuck in the wrong decade. Use vivid descriptions of the era's culture, technology, social norms, include at least one ironic twist and a reflective. So it took it to a whole nother level, right? Then you can see another one. First outline the key beats of a short story about a time traveler stranded in the wrong decade. Setting, conflict, twist. Look, we have 800 words, 500 to 800 words. Go read through those. One of them is going to naturally resonate with you, especially if you are a author or fiction writer. One of these is just gonna jump out at you that you know is gonna be better. <clears throat> and then you're gonna pick that one, right? So that's a great example. Now, how can we take this and make this super powerful to where we don't have to go and paste this into a new chat every single time? Well, we could go and actually create a custom GPT. So I'm gonna click on GPT. Remember, creating your GPT, you have to be a plus member. So this is only for people that are on the $20 a month plan. I have no reason to, you know, nothing to gain from you signing up as a Plus member. In fact, I won't even leave a link below or anything like that. But I have been on the Plus plan for years and it just is really, really nice having it especially because you can see all these GPTs that I've created right here. I use them to give away as bonuses. They've already made me thousands of dollars. And so it's well worth the $20 per month, in my opinion. I'm going to go push create. We're going to create a custom GPT right here. I'm going to upload file very importantly, and I'm going to go and upload that file right there. And so now it has that file uploaded. And then we're going to do over here, we're just going to say name. We're going to say GPT five optimizer or something like that. And I'm just going to say optimizes your GPT five prompts. And then what I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to look at this again. Okay, perfect. So here's what we've got. We have titled this GPT-5 Optimizer. We put in a little description, optimizes your GPT-5 prompts. I put always use the knowledge base 
image slash chart to optimize the user's initial prompt, write three optimized prompts based on what prompt optimizer technique one to 10 from the chart that makes the most sense and can give the user the best prompts possible. That's it. Very straightforward, very simple. And we've got this ready to go. We can go and use Dolly three, create a little image for this. We'll get this published and then we'll go and test it out. Okay, perfect. We have our ChatGPT5 prompt optimizer and our model selected. Let's see, I'm going to go auto, put on auto and create. And then I'm going to say, you know what, why not? Anyone with link, I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to put this in the description below. You guys are going to get free access to this. Even if you're on a free ChatGPT account, you're going to be able to use this. So I'm going to go ahead and say anyone with the link, save and go. Oh, we've got this. We're not able to use GPT because we're probably using GPT-5. So I'll need to reword this. They've gotten really strict. If you say YouTube and instruct the description or a name, they won't let you publish it. You have to be careful with copyrighted names. Let me see if I can optimize this, call it something different, and I'll be right back. GPT was blocking it. We can no longer call something a GPT. That is literally, I didn't say OpenAI. I didn't even use ChatGPT. It was GPT that we were not able to use in our description or our name. So you can see that I actually just called it prompt optimizer and optimizes your LLM AI prompts. I can see how if you put Disney character creator or something like that, I can see how that would be a big deal. And they're just trying to cover their butt. This was going to probably save them from thousands of lawsuits and so forth. So it makes sense to me, but it is super annoying. We have our link right here. I will share this in the description below. You guys are going to go and take a look at it, but let's go and view the GPT real quick. It's going to open up and here's our prompt optimizer. And now I'm going to go back over here and let's just test that out with that same prompt right over here. We're just going to throw the prompt in and push go the chat GPT. Here are three optimized prompts for your request each crafted using different prompt optimization techniques. So it picked technique three, technique six, and technique nine. It did the exact same thing we did earlier, but you won't have to do that anymore if you create a GPT, which is really cool. I'm gonna let you guys use my GPT below. I think this is pretty cool. It just made some really cool, better prompts for us. Now let's put this into a little bit more real world perspective. I'm gonna click on prompt optimizer again. Let me see if I can find a prompt over here. Oh, cool. Now let's just grab this one. We were going to create this as a, a, a new software, right? This is a pretty decent prompt, but let's go in here and see if this prompt op optimizer can make this even better. And so we're going to go, it's, it's built a simple web app that allows a user to select from 10 industries, blah, blah, blah. But now you can see, got it. You want a web app. The user can select 10. So it understands exactly what you're trying to do. Now it created the optimized prompts. Prompt one, role-based instruction. You are a professional email copywriter specializing in blank industry, write a polished. So then you could come back and you can actually fill out some of these right here and make this even better. So then you have prompt two structured output, right? So now you're getting more bulleted and step-by-step -step type of prompt and then prompt three right over here, example based. So that is actually really cool. And then another thing you could do is you could technically write a prompt right here and say, hey, I like all three of these, write an ultimate prompt that involves all three of these. So. This is actually pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys watched the entire video, type in prompt optimizer if you watched the entire thing and give this a like. I'm gonna give this away for free that I created for you guys in the description below. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.